Hello, genealogists. This is Craig, and this is Just Genealogy. And today we're going to continue our discussion of the Otis Archives, the medical surgical history of the Civil War. So what we're going to talk about today is Volume 1, Part 2. We've discussed Volume 1, the overview previously, and this is the second medical volume. And it's over a thousand pages, and it deals with Class 1 zymotic diseases. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And zymotic diseases are infectious, contagious diseases originally regarded as being caused by a process similar to fermentation, I guess. But what it looks like that we're dealing with specifically in this volume is diarrhea and dysentery, and it's very many different kinds. So the book begins with statistical remarks and then reports and extracts from such reports, and then a discussion of fatal cases of diarrhea and dysentery with accounts of the morbid appearances observed. And there are a lot of plates and medical illustrations of colons stretched out, and I'll spare you that. Um, they're just not very exciting. Uh, in the future, when we deal with... Uh, Broken bones, I'll show you some broken bones, but showing you colons is not exactly my idea of a good time. So there also is a very deep discussion on the remarks on the pathology and treatment of diarrhea and dysentery. And then it goes on into discussions of acute dy diarrhea, acute dysentery, chronic dysentery, and a lot of other things that if you're a physician, you might have an interest in, and if you're interested in medical history, <laughs> But from the perspective of us as genealogists and our research into people, uh, it's not much help. However, it does deal with the issues of causes and treatments, and the lists of treatments is long. There's a list of plates, a list of illustrations, those kind of things. And there's an index of cases in which there are appear to be in this volume 905 cases. Unfortunately, there's no in name index to the soldiers, which is unfortunate, but there is a list of contributing medical doctors and observers of the condition. Let me read you three of the cases just to get you in the right frame of mind. Um, it's Searching these for these people is unfortunate since there's only 905 people here, but uh, it still has, my own great-grandfather was in the Civil War, and he got a pension after the war, and he got a pension for diarrhea. And in fact, diarrhea was the number one cause for getting a pension in the Civil War. The second cause was dysentery. And so this volume deals with that very issue and those individuals. So if you want to know what your ancestor had to deal with, if they got a pension because they had diarrhea or dysentery, this is the place to get everything into context. So case number 31 is Private Thomas A. Scott. He's in Company K, 43rd Tennessee. He's 24. He was admitted September 4th, 1864 with chronic diarrhea of six months standing. He has from five to eight passages daily. They are thin, watery, and light, very light colored. There is no record of his treatment until September 16th when solution of bromine was prescribed. September 30th, he uh, had but two operations in the past 24 hours. They are still unchanged in character. September 26th is much better to have full diet. September 28th, discharge cured. The next person, and this is a Confederate, is Case 32, Private Joseph Chitwood, Company H, 1st Georgia, admitted September 5th, 1864, acute diarrhea, had from eight to 10 thin watery operations in 24 hours, is very much emaciated, was put on the use of bromine September 16th. There is no record of his previous treatment. September 22nd, the patient has improved rapidly. The stools are less frequent and more natural. September 25th has continued to improve. The operations are now quite natural. Has been on a full diet for three days, discharged, cured. 
And then there's a note, according to the hospital register, this man was readmitted with diarrhea October 27th and returned to the barracks December 3rd. Then Private Jesse G. Ingram, Company G, 48th Tennessee, admitted September 6th, 1864, acute dysentery, had 10 to 12 small, painful, bloody stools daily. Up to the 16th of September, the patient did not improve. He was then put on a solution of bromine. September 20th has improved quite rapidly. Stools are natural in appearance. September 26th, returned to the barracks cured. So it looks like a lot of these people, especially in the three that I've read to you, they're in the section of the discussion that deals with cases treated with bromine. And that explains why all of them are treated with bromine. But there are sections that deal with uh, each individual treatment. Bromine seems to be probably the most consistent thing that is used to treat them. There are uh, circumstances where individuals are dying of this, but I won't, I'll spare you that today. So what we've dealt with now is the second medical volume of the medical surgical history of the Civil War, where it deals with diarrhea and dysentery. How exciting. It deals with both Union and Confederate soldiers. It deals with various treatments, and there are a little over 900 cases that are talked about specifically in regards to name, unit, age, and disposition. So this is Craig. This has been Just Genealogy, and another day has gone by. I urge you to subscribe. I urge you to let me know what you would like me to talk about. Um, I'd like to talk about something other than diarrhea and dysentery, if you don't mind. So thank you all so very much. Stay safe.